Okay, y'all, I'm doing a mom tag. And as y'all know, this month, our challenge, we are focusing on shadow work. And my mom is going to answer some of the prompts that I have for y'all. Any prompt that she don't <laughs> want to answer, she can say pass, and she won't have to answer it. So the first one, she already was telling me that she hate this question. And that is... Not that I hate it, but it's re it's a repetitive question. But go ahead. It's a repetitive question. And I said that in the video. I'm like, I'm pretty sure that y'all have heard or seen this somewhere before. But um, so we're going to pass that one. You can go ahead. What, what, what was it again? The question is, if you could meet a your child a child version of yourself, what would you tell them? One off the top that I know I would say is that life goes on. Life gonna go on with or without you, regardless of what happens. And um, just you just gotta do you. People gonna talk no matter what. They may be talking. This may be hot this month. Or uh, whatever the case may be, and then next week it'll be something new, it'll be something different. So this too shall pass. Whatever it is, it's going to come to pass. Whatever it is in that moment, the two is saying that whatever has passed before, whatever that thing is, this too is going to pass. So no matter what it is, you're going to get through it. So we grow through what we go through. Okay. All right. So the next question is. What is your safe place? What do you do or where do you go when you need to feel safe and protected? Hi, this is my safe place. My sh this is my grandbaby, y'all. Um, <laughs> my shed is my safe place. It is my safe haven. It is my escape. It is um, definitely my shed is one of them. Um, that's the place where I de definitely feel safe. Even just my home itself, we have made um, our home. My daughter is my witness. Is my the way that our home is set up? She says like, um, who, who is it, Willy Wonka? <laughs> so it is definitely my safe place, a place where I can escape the reality of what goes on outside of the doors. What's going on on CNN, CNN, ABC, NBC? What's going on in the world? Period. So definitely um, just, and I also have what I call an escape room where I have um, a life-size arcade game. I have dolls in there because I am a dog collector and I have just so many things that just bring me um, happiness and yeah, basically. So yeah, I have my way of escape and whether it's back here in nature in my backyard at my shed or in my escape room. So I have a way of escaping reality. Okay, this one is a little deep. Remember you can pass if you um, need to pass. It's when did you feel unloved or alone in your childhood or early life? What impact does that have on you and your current life? That's a really a good question. It's not too many times that I felt unloved I really won't say um, unloved. I would probably say alone, and that was because um, my father passed away when I was five years old. Bless his soul. May he rest in peace. And you know what? Today is October the 1st, and today is his birthday. Happy, to, happy heavenly birthday. So, yes, today is his birthday. Um... But it was that a lot of my childhood friends had a father figure. And without my dad being there, physically being there, and me just hearing stories about him, sometimes I just, you know, wish that my dad was there. Not saying that I was lacking anything. Um, I did have a bonus dad. My mom did get remarried. I had a bonus dad at that time. And um, also, my mom was definitely there. She overcompensated because my dad was not there. But I still just, um, the, all the great stories I heard about her, him, I just wish that he was physically able to witness a lot of things and to be able to be there. And I got to share a lot of those times with him, especially like when I got married. I wanted, I wish that he was able to be there to give me away. And just um, share a lot of different things with him. Um, 
boyfriend, dating, just all types of stuff. Um, you know, father, daughter, dance at the wedding, just little different things like that to that nature. So, yeah. The next one is if you could talk to the person who hurt you the most right now, what is one what is one thing you would say to them and why? And this is about being honest. So it's about who hurt you the most. You don't have to answer this question, but I think this is a good question. Even if you want to journal it down and talk about it, you should do that. Oh, okay. Because I feel like she hold things in, y'all. <laughs> yeah, that that one may be a. Pass. It's it's definitely gonna be a pass, and it'll probably be something that could be journaled. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to see who. I know somebody who did hurt me, but that was friendship wise. I said, "Girl, you lied. You know you lied. You just a liar." No, just kidding. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and that was many many years ago too. That was many many years ago. I was trying to see who hurt me the most. So, I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to pass on that one. Okay. okay. The next one is, what did you enjoy doing when you were younger, and do you still do it now? If not, why? Boo. I still do it. I still do everything that I enjoyed doing when I was younger. I enjoyed being around friends, family, um, my faith, having fun. All of those things, um, like I say, arcade game, escape room, got everything in there that I had when I was younger, still got those things. So I just enjoyed life. I'm just a lover of life, and I love living and living life to the fullest. So that's what I try to do, and that's what I still try to do today. So that is it. Okay. Do you think asking for help is a strength or a weakness, and why? Um... Let's see. Asking, asking for help help is definitely a strength. It takes strength to be able to even have it in you to have to be able to ask somebody for help. Help because a lot of times people don't want to ask for help. Mm -hmm. But I do believe that God created us to be. Um, this is my grandbaby, y'all. I believe that God created no us. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I believe that God created us to be. Um, not isolated, but be around each other. We got to all live in this world together. But so um, definitely, though, sometimes people don't want to ask for help because they don't want to be a, um, a hindrance. They don't want to, what's the word? Burden. It's a burden to someone else. So it does take a lot of strength to be able to just put it out there and say, hey, look, I need help. But a closed mouth don't get fed. If you don't let anybody know what's going on, you got to have at least one person at least one person that you can trust somebody that's close to you and um somebody that you can share things with somebody that you can tell something to and definitely um express yourself to them without being judged without being looked at down on looked at in a different light but just a honest and open relationship with that person and be able to tell them look girl uh you know ma'am sir gentlemen i need help like i don't know the answer because nobody knows the answer we haven't arrived yet so we don't know the answer to everything so definitely but it takes strength to be able to say that to even say that you need help that takes strength mm -hmm. even for myself like i'm gonna try to do it myself <laughs> i it got it gotta be i really 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 <laughs> So, yeah, definitely. But that's what happens. We So many times we try to play superhero and we try to wear these capes and do things on our own. And life is just not always about it, us being Hi. able to do it. And I don't know if we're trying to prove to somebody else or prove to ourselves. But sometimes you're going to need that help because, you know, one can chase a thousand, but <laughs> two can chase ten thousand. So, yeah, um, it's you. You can build greater, you know, with more. Okay. Yeah. When you think of your future, what are your fears? Like, what are you afraid of the most when you think of no. your future? What, what? Um, what am I afraid of the most when it comes to my future? Mm -hmm. mm. No. 
that's that's a good question too but i haven't it, it, it probably would be not accomplish everything that i want to accomplish i think that was probably be my my biggest thing i don't want to take anything to the grave i want to accomplish everything that god has given me here and given me as far as a dream given given me as far as i want all of those things to come in manifestation and and be able be and do them like everything i put my mind to i do it i might say that i want to do this i want to do that and i do it so i don't want to take anything to the grave so i don't i don't want my work here on earth to be undone when I look at the future and I get to the future and I look back and say, hey, I didn't do this for whatever reason. So, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to ask you two more. So this one is, what behaviors do you judge in others and is it justified? How? What be be behaviors? Behaviors, yeah. That I judge in other or people. Aspects, like, yeah, like what is something that's that you know that you might pinpoint out in people that you kind of judge probably when they smoking when they're uh if they're if they're smoking or if they don't have their life together but yet and still they're talking about somebody else's life or um when it comes to living certain lifestyles that i don't live that i don't engage in that i don't do so definitely i know that i probably look at it um from a judgmental eye so even though i try not to judge anybody but i mean we're humans that it, it comes with the territory we sometimes we judge without even knowing that we judge and sometimes we judge even with our facial expression we may see something but don't say anything but we know that if you think it you're already done prejudged the person because now it's, it becomes a thought and so then that thought sometimes becomes an action and it becomes in your heart but yeah, sometimes we can just look at somebody, not even say say anything, but our facial expression will give it away. Our body language, um, when we look at a certain person, like you know, the body body language gonna give it away. And do you think that judging people is justified? In my opinion, we want to take it to the Bible. Your opinion, <laughs> and, and, and okay, your opinion, this shadow work, not Bible work. Okay, because I was about to say that <laughs> I can take it to the Bible, and bring, but. Uh, is judging people is justified um that's a perception because everybody perceives things you know in their own mind the way they see things so my answer may not be you know it's, it's what people perceive basically on their reason for judging but do you think your, yours like your reason for judging people do you think that's justified do you think that's a good reason to if somebody's smoking do you think that's a good reason to judge and be like you know i'm just gonna keep this relationship at bay i know they need to smoke 10 times a day that's not a relationship that i want to be around <laughs> right I'm, oh if you're looking at it from that standpoint yeah. yes yes because i know that i got boundaries and certain things i'm just not gonna yeah just allowing my space allowing my peace just yeah so definitely okay. absolutely my judge mental thoughts and feelings are valid. Valid. <laughs> valid. <laughs> yes, <it's> valid. <laughs> I paid for this valet parking boot. I cannot. For me to get my peace, my happiness, my joy, my strength, all of that. Okay, so I mean, I've been going in order since I'm going to go in order and to the oh, next. Oh, you said the last two. That was a, that was one, right? Oh, go ahead. I thought we had one it more. Was two, but go ahead. Go oh, okay. Well, let's do one more one more let's do one more let's do one more okay this one is the next one is when do you feel most uncomfortable why do you think you feel that way when do you feel most uncomfortable why do you think you feel that way when do i feel most uncomfortable hmm i'm trying to see because i can work a room boo <laughs> I can roll with the best of them. Let me see. <laughs> well, no, I don't think I really be feeling uncomfortable. Let me see. Okay, very, a very Leo thing to say. Let's go to the next question. <laughs> Let's go to the next question. <laughs> oh, boy. What is what is your biggest regret? What is what, Nagrab? What is your biggest regu regret? Hold on, baby. What is your biggest regret and... How does it influence your life now? Or how did it influence your life now? Because it doesn't 
Cause you know, regret. Cause I'm like, this was this about to be a very Leo question to um, answer then too. I don't have no regrets, baby. I just live life. Ain't no regrets in this thing. He just do us, honey. <laughs> Ain't no, uh-uh, no regrets. No. Uh-uh, you don't live life with regrets. You... No, you don't live harboring on your regrets. But right. some, everybody has something. I don't have like, a regret. I know, dang well, I ain't have to do that. Or I could have did that. Okay, let's go to the next question. You ain't got no regrets. <laughs> uh -uh, you ain't got no regrets. Be regretting. No mm -hmm. regrets. Okay. No world rats regrets. No regrets. <laughs> no regrets. Um, What's the next one? Um, I don't know what the next one is, but we can do it. What is one thing you look forward to when you wake up? If nothing comes to mind, what can you create to look forward to? <laughs> what I look forward to when I wake up is waking up. Is being able to not only wake up but to get up to get up out of bed because it's somebody that woke up can't get up and if i can't get up out of bed then i can't even start my day i can't do anything so i wake up so i can be able to get up and get out of bed <laughs> basically <laughs> what okay we got a lover of life here yes okay so those were basically the first um 11 questions i believe 11 questions for the first um days that my mom answered and this is just giving y'all a little insight of how to do i guess i can be a camera y'all just sit there it's just a little insight for y'all so y'all can answer so y'all can answer y'all journal prompts or whatever and again like i said you can all you can all write it down if you want to make a video diary you can make a video diary too and you can go back and look at your videos that you um that you recorded for the journal prompt prompts but the whole thing about shadow work is to really, really deep dive and be honest with yourself. And that's why I said writing sometimes is a little bit easier. I feel like when you are writing, you're being a little bit more honest um, and things like that. So, yeah, because it's, it's nice to listen to different people perspectives. You get to learn things and then you also get to think about things that you probably didn't think of. Um, and sometimes it's nice to see that people may think the same way as you so you don't feel alone because my mom when she was talking about the judging I feel the same way I feel like me judging people no not treating you based off of my judgment but me first initially judging you is justified because that keeps me out of a lot of situations if I see you selling crack I know that I'm not gonna go be your friend because I'm not gonna be around somebody who sells crack so my judgment is helping me stay out of situations that I don't want to be in. You get what I'm saying? And so, um, yes, it's posted on Instagram and it's posted in the community tab. In the community tab, you can share your thoughts and opinions um, about your shadow work if you want to. You can always email me as well if you want to talk personally. All right, so I will see you all in the next video and y'all have a good one.